Have you ever witnessed something so shocking that it changed your perspective on the world? Imagine a scene where a school bus is parked, kids are laughing and chatting, and then suddenly, the atmosphere shifts. What if in front of those innocent eyes, a police officer confronted the bus driver? An incident that shook the very foundation of trust between authority and the community. What would you do if you were one of those students? Would you speak up, stay silent, or take action? In this video, we dive deep into a heart-wrenching event where a black school driver faced harassment from the police while students watched in disbelief. But here's the question that lingers. How did these young minds react in the face of injustice? Did they stand by or rise to the occasion? You'll be surprised to learn about the bravery and unity these students displayed that day. As we unfold this dramatic story, we will not only explore the incident itself, but also highlight some lesser-known facts about racial tensions and community responses that have shaped our society. Why did this event go viral? What does it reveal about our perceptions of law enforcement? And most importantly, what can we learn from these courageous students? Stay with us until the end, because you'll witness an incredible display of support and solidarity that might just restore your faith in humanity. You'll discover how this event sparked discussions about race, justice, and the role of the community in standing up for what is right. By the end of this video, you'll understand the significance of these students' actions and why it's crucial to speak out against injustice, no matter how daunting it may seem. So, are you ready to explore this powerful story of courage and community? Let's dive in. On a typical Tuesday morning, the sun peeked over the horizon, casting a warm glow on the bustling streets of the neighborhood. Children filled the sidewalks, laughing and chatting as they made their way to school. Among them was a school bus, its bright yellow exterior gleaming in the sunlight. This bus was not just a vehicle, it was a lifeline for many students, a bridge to education, and a space where friendships blossomed. Inside, the bus driver, Mr. Thompson, a black man with a warm smile and a gentle demeanor, greeted each child as they climbed aboard. He knew their names, their favorite games, and even their dreams. Mr. Thompson was more than just a driver. He was a mentor, a confidant, and a source of comfort for many of these kids. They felt safe in his presence, knowing he would take them to school and back home without a hitch. But that day, everything changed. As the bus came to a stop in front of the school, an unexpected commotion erupted outside. Students gathered, chattering excitedly, completely unaware of the storm brewing just beyond the bus doors. Mr. Thompson turned to glance outside, sensing the change in energy. A police car had pulled up, its lights flashing ominously, casting eerie shadows over the playground. At first, it seemed like just another routine police check. Perhaps there was a minor disturbance, or maybe they were there to ensure the safety of the children. However, Mr. Thompson's heart sank as he recognized the tension in the air. The officers stepped out of the car with an air of authority that felt unsettling. Why are they here? A student whispered to his friend, eyes wide with curiosity and fear. Do you think they're going to talk to us? Another child replied, fidgeting nervously in their seat. Unbeknownst to the children, the situation was about to take a dramatic turn. The police approached the bus, their demeanor stern and intimidating. One officer, a tall man with a commanding presence, began shouting for Mr. Thompson to step outside. Confusion washed over the students as they watched their beloved driver being summoned as if he were a criminal. Stay calm, everyone, Mr. Thompson called out, forcing a reassuring smile. But inside, his heart raced. He knew he had done nothing wrong, yet the weight of the situation pressed down on him like a heavy blanket. As he stepped off the bus, the officer's voice boomed, You need to show us your identification. Mr. Thompson's mind raced. Why was this happening? He felt the eyes of his students boring into him, filled with confusion and concern. They had always seen him as a protector, a pillar of strength. Now he felt exposed, vulnerable, and helpless. Is this really necessary? He asked, trying to keep his tone calm. 
I'm just here to take the kids to school. But the officer's expression remained unyielding. You're in a restricted area. We need to ensure everything is in order. The students, still inside the bus, began to whisper among themselves. Why are they talking to Mr. Thompson like that? One girl asked, her voice trembling. I don't know, but it doesn't feel right. Another boy replied, his fists clenched in frustration. Tension hung thick in the air as the other officer, a woman with a no-nonsense attitude, started to question Mr. Thompson. The kids watched, their hearts racing. They could sense that something was off. Just then, a boy named Jamal, known for his fearless spirit, decided enough was enough. This isn't fair, he shouted from the back of the bus. Leave him alone. Jamal's voice cut through the tension like a knife. It was bold, it was brave, and it was exactly what Mr. Thompson needed. The students began to murmur in agreement, their faces lighting up with determination. Yeah, he's our driver. He's done nothing wrong. Another student chimed in, emboldened by Jamal's courage. Mr. Thompson looked back at the bus, seeing the rallying support of his young passengers. Their unwavering belief in him fueled his resolve. But the officers remained unfazed, their expressions hardening. Step aside, kid. The male officer barked at Jamal, trying to reassert control over the situation. But Jamal stood his ground. No, we're not going to let you treat him like this. He's a good man. The tension reached a boiling point. The other students began to rise from their seats, their voices joining Jamal's in a chorus of support. Let him go, they shouted, their hearts pounding in unison. The scene was surreal, a group of children standing up against authority, their innocence clashing with the harsh reality of the world outside. It was a moment that would be etched in their memories forever. As the chaos unfolded, a teacher named Ms. Rivera noticed the commotion from her classroom window. She rushed outside, her heart pounding with concern. What she saw made her blood run cold. Her students were rallying together, their faces filled with determination, while Mr. Thompson was being harassed by the police. Hey, what's going on here? She shouted, rushing over to intervene. The officers turned their attention to Ms. Rivera, who was known for her fierce advocacy for her students. We're just ensuring everything is in order. One officer replied, but his tone lacked conviction. This is not how you handle a situation, Ms. Rivera argued, stepping protectively in front of Mr. Thompson. These kids look up to him. He's a valued member of our community. At that moment, the dynamic shifted. The police officers, faced with the combined strength of the students and Ms. Rivera, began to waver. The fearlessness of the children was a powerful reminder of the impact of unity and the strength of standing together against injustice. Let's all take a step back and discuss this calmly, Ms. Rivera suggested, her voice firm but calm. The students nodded, their eyes wide with hope. They had witnessed their teacher defend their driver, and it inspired them even more. In that moment, the lines between authority and community began to blur. Mr. Thompson, feeling the support of his students and the teacher, took a deep breath. He stood taller, his confidence returning. I'm here to protect these kids, not cause trouble. I've done nothing wrong. The police officers exchanged glances, realizing the gravity of the situation they had created. The scene was no longer just about them. It had turned into a powerful statement about community, respect, and standing against injustice. As the moments stretched on, a hush fell over the crowd. The students were no longer just passive observers. They had become active participants in their own story. They were not just watching from the sidelines. They were living it. And as the tension simmered, a quiet understanding began to develop. This was not just about Mr. Thompson. It was about the children's right to feel safe and supported in their community. It was a moment that would redefine their understanding of justice, authority, and the power of their voices. The tension outside the bus was palpable. As Mr. Thompson faced the police officers, the students inside were overwhelmed with emotions. Some felt anger, others fear, but one thing was certain. They could not sit idly by. 
Jamal with fire in his heart, had sparked something within them, a collective spirit that demanded to be heard. The bus, usually a sanctuary filled with laughter and chatter, had turned into a battleground of emotions. Kids huddled together, whispering urgently among themselves. What should we do? One girl asked, her eyes darting between the officers and Mr. Thompson. He's our driver. He's not doing anything wrong. What if they take him away? Another boy chimed in, his voice quivering. In that moment, the atmosphere inside the bus shifted. They were no longer just students. They were witnesses to a moment of injustice that demanded action. The fear that gripped them morphed into courage. They had learned about standing up for what is right in class, but now it was their chance to put those lessons into action. Jamal's voice rang out again. Let's show them we're with Mr. Thompson. The other students nodded, their eyes gleaming with determination. The whispers grew louder, evolving into a chorus of support for their beloved bus driver. Yeah, we won't let them treat him like this, shouted a girl with bright red braids, her hands balled into fists. The officers turned to face the bus, surprised by the united front forming inside. You kids need to stay out of this. The male officer barked, his tone sharp like a whip. But the students were undeterred. No, we're not going to let you bully him, shouted another boy, his voice cracking with emotion. They began to stand, filling the aisle of the bus, a wave of solidarity rising among them. From her position on the schoolyard, Ms. Rivera felt a surge of pride and worry. She had always encouraged her students to stand up for themselves and others, but seeing them rise to the occasion filled her heart with mixed emotions. She moved closer to the bus, ready to support them, but also fearful of how the situation might escalate. What's happening here is not right, Ms. Rivera interjected, her voice strong and commanding. These kids are simply trying to stand up for someone they respect. You have no right to treat Mr. Thompson this way. The female officer, who had remained silent until now, shifted uncomfortably. The power dynamic had shifted, and she could see the determination in the student's eyes. They were not just kids, they were a force to be reckoned with. Listen, the male officer said, his voice slightly less aggressive, we're just doing our job. We need to make sure everything is okay. But everything is okay, Jamal yelled, stepping forward, his voice full of conviction. He's done nothing wrong. He's just doing his job too. The back and forth continued, each student emboldened by the presence of their peers. They were shouting now, a mixture of anger and confusion fueling their protest. Let him go. We want Mr. Thompson. The chant began to resonate echoing through the schoolyard. The officers exchanged glances, their authority challenged by the unexpected unity of the students. As they stood together, fists raised and voices united, the weight of the situation pressed heavily upon the police. They could feel the shift, the tide turning against them. One of the students, a girl named Sarah with glasses that slipped down her nose, shouted, You don't scare us. We're not afraid to speak up. Her voice broke through the noise, capturing attention. The crowd of students outside the bus continued to grow. Other teachers and parents had begun to notice the commotion. They started gathering near the entrance, curiosity mingling with concern. Whispers spread through the crowd, and soon, more voices joined the chorus of support for Mr. Thompson. In that moment, the bus transformed into a symbol of defiance and resilience. It was no longer just a mode of transport. It became a fortress of hope. The students rallied around Mr. Thompson, creating a barrier against the forces they perceived as unjust. As the chants grew louder, Ms. Rivera stepped back to assess the situation. She knew she had to maintain a level of calm, but her heart raced. The world outside the bus had turned into chaos, and she feared for the safety of her students and Mr. Thompson. Okay, let's think this through. Ms. Rivera called out, trying to channel the energy of the moment into something productive. We need to stay strong, but also be smart. Let's talk about what we can do to help. The students fell silent, their resolve unwavering but their emotions raw. They could feel the weight of the situation pressing down on them, 
but they didn't want to back down. They were ready to fight for Mr. Thompson, even if it meant facing the police. Let's record what's happening, suggested a tech-savvy student named Kevin, pulling out his phone. If we film it, people will see how unfair this is. Yes, others shouted in agreement. The idea of documenting the injustice sparked a new wave of energy among the students. They quickly formed a plan. While some would record the incident, others would continue to voice their support for Mr. Thompson. Jamal took a deep breath, feeling a mixture of fear and determination. Let's show them we're not afraid. We want justice, he yelled, encouraging others to join in. As Kevin started recording, the chants became louder. Justice for Mr. Thompson. Justice for Mr. Thompson. The energy surge, transforming the schoolyard into a lively demonstration against perceived injustice. The police officers, now surrounded by a sea of determined young faces, felt the pressure mounting. They had entered the situation with authority, but the collective will of the students began to chip away at their confidence. All right, let's just take a moment. The male officer finally said, raising his hands as if to calm the growing crowd. We're not here to cause problems. The students did not back down. Then let him go. They shouted in unison, their voices echoing against the walls of the school. Ms. Rivera seized the moment. Why don't we all take a step back and talk about what's happening here? She suggested. We need to understand why Mr. Thompson is being treated this way. The officers hesitated, exchanging glances, unsure how to navigate the situation they had escalated. The unity and strength of the students had created a palpable shift. As they stood their ground, the air filled with a mix of fear and hope. The students were terrified, yes, but they were also emboldened by the power of their voices. The possibility of change felt real, and they clung to that hope tightly. In the midst of the chaos, Mr. Thompson felt a swell of pride as he watched his young passengers rally together. He had always told them to stand up for what is right, and now they were doing just that. They were defending him, not just as their bus driver, but as a member of their community. Thank you, he whispered, his voice barely audible over the noise. He knew he would fight for them, just as they were fighting for him. Suddenly, the female officer stepped forward, breaking the tension with a sigh. We need to make sure we handle this professionally. Let's talk about what's happening here without the hostility. Jamal took a step back, feeling a small glimmer of hope. Okay, but we need to know why you're treating him like this, he insisted, his voice steady. The officer nodded, realizing the need to address the concerns of the students directly. We were responding to reports of suspicious activity in the area, and we thought it was necessary to check in, she explained, her tone softening slightly. But he's just driving a bus, Sarah interjected, her voice rising again. You can't just harass someone without a reason. He's part of our community. The female officer met her gaze, sensing the sincerity in her words. You're right, she admitted, but sometimes we have to follow protocol to keep everyone safe. I understand that it feels unfair. The students remained skeptical, but they could see a crack in the officer's defenses. They had made their voices heard, and it felt empowering. As the conversation continued, more teachers and parents arrived, drawn by the commotion. Ms. Rivera began to explain the situation to them, ensuring that the voices of the students were being represented. The gathering crowd became an additional layer of support, reinforcing the idea that this was a community issue, not just an isolated incident. Each minute felt like an eternity, but the students stood resolute. Their chanting had shifted from aggression to a more focused call for dialogue. They wanted answers, and they wanted justice, not just for Mr. Thompson, but for anyone who might face similar treatment. In that moment, as the dialogue began to unfold, the students realized the power they held. They had transformed from passive observers into active participants, demanding accountability and respect. They were no longer just children. They were agents of change, challenging authority, and standing together against injustice. The incident at the bus stop did not stay confined to the schoolyard. 
News of what had happened spread like wildfire through the community, igniting conversations in homes, at local shops, and online. The incident resonated deeply, striking a chord in many who had either witnessed or experienced similar situations in their lives. As the sun began to set, casting an orange glow over the neighborhood, families gathered around their dinner tables. Conversations flowed as people shared their thoughts and feelings about the event. Did you hear what happened to Mr. Thompson? A mother asked, her voice filled with disbelief. Yes, I can't believe the police would treat him like that, replied her husband, shaking his head. He's such a good man, always kind to the kids. In homes across the community, the outrage grew. Many felt compelled to act, to voice their concerns about the police treatment of Mr. Thompson and the message it sent to the children witnessing it all. It wasn't just an isolated incident. It was a reminder of the larger issues of racial profiling and injustice that had persisted for far too long. The following day, a local activist named Maria heard about the incident from her friend, who had seen it unfold. Maria was known in the community for organizing peaceful protests and advocating for social justice. She felt a surge of determination. We need to do something about this, she thought. People need to know what happened. Without wasting any time, Maria took to social media. She created a post detailing the incident, urging people to come together to support Mr. Thompson. Let's show our community that we stand against injustice, she wrote, including hashtags like hashtag justice for Thompson and hashtag stand with students. The response was overwhelming. Within hours, hundreds of shares, comments, and messages flooded in. People expressed their anger and sadness, but more importantly, they expressed their solidarity. I'll be there. One comment read, This is unacceptable. Another replied. As the days passed, a plan began to take shape. Maria organized a community rally to take place at the local park, where families could gather to show their support for Mr. Thompson and call for an end to police harassment. She reached out to local leaders, schools, and organizations, encouraging them to join in. On the day of the rally, excitement buzzed through the air. Children wore shirts bearing slogans like, We Stand Together and Justice for All. Parents brought picnic blankets and snacks, transforming the park into a vibrant gathering place. Music played in the background, and the atmosphere felt hopeful, electric with anticipation. As the crowd began to swell, Maria took to the stage, her heart racing. She looked out at the sea of faces, families, friends, and strangers united by a common cause. Thank you all for coming today, she said, her voice resonating with passion. We are here not just for Mr. Thompson, but for everyone who has faced injustice. Together, we will raise our voices. Cheers erupted from the crowd, fueling her determination. This isn't just about one man. This is about standing up for our community. This is about ensuring that our children feel safe and respected. We cannot remain silent. As she spoke, the crowd grew louder, chanting slogans that echoed through the park. No justice, no peace. They shouted, a powerful mantra that resonated in their hearts. The energy was palpable, a wave of collective strength washing over them. Among the crowd were some of Mr. Thompson's students who had transformed from passive observers into young activists. Jumel stood at the front, holding a handmade sign that read, Mr. Thompson is our hero. His heart swelled with pride, knowing they were making a difference. The students shared their stories on stage, recounting how Mr. Thompson had always been there for them. He teaches us more than just how to get from school to home, Sarah said, her voice strong. He teaches us about kindness, respect, and standing up for what's right. With every word, the crowd erupted in applause, and the atmosphere shifted from somber to empowering. Maria felt the momentum building, and she knew this was just the beginning. As night fell, the park illuminated with candles, each flame representing a commitment to justice and solidarity. People held hands, forming a circle of unity. Maria took a deep breath feeling the weight of the moment. Tonight, we stand as one, she proclaimed. 
We are not just here for Mr. Thompson. We are here for every person who has been wronged. We will not rest until justice is served. The community's response continued to grow in the following weeks. Local news stations picked up the story, interviewing Maria, students, and parents. The media coverage fueled the fire, bringing attention to the systemic issues within the police force. Letters to the editor filled local newspapers, expressing support for Mr. Thompson and calling for accountability. In the days that followed, a petition circulated online, urging the police department to address the incident seriously. We want justice for Mr. Thompson. As the weeks turned into a month, the rallying cry for justice began to resonate beyond their town. Community leaders and activists began to connect with national organizations advocating for police reform. Phone calls were made and meetings scheduled. The momentum was building and Mr. Thompson became a symbol of resilience and hope. As the police department faced growing pressure, the chief of police issued a statement acknowledging the incident. We take these matters seriously, he said, his tone solemn. We will review our procedures and ensure that our officers are held accountable. The statement felt like a small victory, but the community knew there was much more to be done. Jamal and his friends felt a mixture of hope and skepticism. Will anything really change? Jamal wondered aloud, or is this just talk? His friends nodded, understanding his concerns. They had witnessed the power of their voices, but they also knew change would require more than just words. The local school board called a meeting to discuss the incident and its broader implications. Parents, teachers, and community members packed the room, eager to share their thoughts. Maria stood at the front, ready to speak. We need to ensure that our children feel safe in their schools and communities, she urged, her voice steady. This is about more than just Mr. Thompson. It's about changing the culture of fear that has taken hold. As she spoke, Parents shared their own stories of encounters with law enforcement. I worry every day about my son, one father said, his voice filled with emotion. I shouldn't have to fear for his safety when he walks home from school. The school board listened, some nodding in agreement, while others shifted uncomfortably in their seats. The room was charged with emotion, each person representing a piece of the larger puzzle. Meanwhile, in the background, the police department faced increasing scrutiny. Local and national news outlets continued to cover the story, asking tough questions about the incident. What protocols are in place to protect citizens? A reporter asked during a press conference. The police chief struggled to provide satisfactory answers, feeling the pressure mounting. In response, community leaders organized forums to discuss police reform and community safety. They invited experts to speak on the importance of accountability and building trust between law enforcement and the community. This is about creating a system that works for everyone. One speaker emphasized, we must ensure that every voice is heard. As the community engaged in discussions, the bonds among residents strengthened. They held workshops on activism, empowering each other to continue the fight for justice. It was not just about one incident. It became a movement, a call for change that transcended their town. The students took it upon themselves to spread the word in their schools. They organized assemblies, inviting speakers to discuss issues of race, justice, and community safety. Jummel stood at the front of the assembly, his voice strong and clear. We are the future, and we have to make sure we create a world where everyone is treated equally, he declared. With every assembly, the message spread further. Other schools began to join the movement, echoing the calls for justice and reform. Students wrote letters to their local representatives, demanding change. We will not stay silent, one letter read. We demand a community where everyone is safe. The police department, feeling the weight of public opinion, began to implement changes. They initiated community engagement programs, aiming to build trust and transparency. Officers attended community events, hoping to mend relationships that had been strained. Yet, amidst the positive changes, tension remained. Some community members were still skeptical. Will they really change, or is it just for show? One woman questioned at a community meeting, 
Others nodded, sharing her concerns. We need to hold them accountable. Another person chimed in. As the weeks turned into months, Mr. Thompson became a symbol of resilience and hope for many. People in the community rallied around him, offering support and encouragement. They wrote him cards, thanking him for his service and standing firm in the face of adversity. One day, a surprise awaited him when he returned to his bus after a long day. The students had gathered, holding a banner that read, Thank you, Mr. Thompson. As he approached, their cheers filled the air. His heart swelled with gratitude. In the weeks following the rally at the park, the air was thick with anticipation. The community's outcry had grown louder, spreading beyond the town's borders. Families were glued to their screens, waiting for updates. Every news report felt like a pulse in the heartbeat of their fight for justice. Would anything change? Would Mr. Thompson receive the recognition he deserved? Or would this be just another case forgotten? As the sun dipped below the horizon one evening, Maria gathered with a few community leaders in a small cafe, the flickering candlelight casting shadows on the walls. They huddled over a table, voices hushed, concern etched on their faces. We need to prepare for the police chief's meeting next week, Maria said, her fingers tapping nervously on the table. If we want real change, we have to present a united front. What if he brushes us off? One of the leaders asked, worry lacing her voice. What if he claims that everything is fine and we just need to move on? Maria's eyes burned with determination. We can't let that happen. We've come too far to back down now. We need to show him that the community is serious about this. We need evidence of how this has impacted us. Over the next few days, the community prepared meticulously for the meeting. Maria, along with Jamal and other students, compiled stories from their peers about their experiences with law enforcement. They recorded videos, took pictures, and gathered testimonies from parents. It was a collective effort, a movement fueled by anger, hope, and the desire for justice. The day of the meeting arrived, and the atmosphere was electric with tension. Residents filled the town hall, the murmur of voices bouncing off the walls. The air smelled of determination, and anticipation hung like a thick fog. Parents, students, and community members filled the seats, their eyes locked on the front where the police chief would soon stand. Maria felt her heart race as she glanced at Jamal, who sat beside her. Are you ready? She asked, her voice barely above a whisper. He nodded, swallowing hard. Let's do this. As the police chief entered the room, the chatter subsided into an eerie silence. The chief, a stern-looking man with a carefully groomed mustache, stood tall, surveying the crowd. Thank you all for being here today, he began, his voice steady but lacking warmth. I appreciate your concerns, and I am here to listen. A collective sigh echoed in the room, but Maria knew they needed to make their voices heard. She stepped forward, her pulse quickening. We are not just here to voice our concerns. We are here because we want change. We want to ensure that what happened to Mr. Thompson does not happen again. The chief raised an eyebrow, his expression unreadable. We take incidents like this very seriously, he replied, but Maria could sense the defensive tone creeping into his words. Maria pressed on, determined. With all due respect, we've heard this before. We want to see action. We want accountability. She paused, glancing at the crowd, who leaned in, eager for more. The community has come together to compile testimonies. We've spoken to families, and we have stories to share. With a nod of encouragement from Jamal, she began to read aloud some of the accounts they had gathered. A father spoke of his fears for his son. A mother recounted a past encounter with police that left her shaken. As the stories unfolded, the room grew tense. Each tale wove a rich tapestry of fear, frustration, and pain. One mother's voice trembled as she recounted how her son was stopped and questioned for simply walking home from school. He was terrified. All he did was be a kid. She cried, her tears reflecting the agony of her experience. The crowd shifted, some wiping away tears, others clenching their fists in anger. 
As the testimonies continued, the atmosphere thickened with emotion. The police chief's expression changed. For the first time, a flicker of empathy crossed his face. He seemed to grasp the weight of the stories being shared, but would it be enough to spur real change? After the testimonies, Maria looked around the room, feeling a wave of solidarity. We want to work with you to find solutions. We need to establish community policing initiatives, provide training for officers, and create spaces for dialogue between law enforcement and the community. This is not just about policing. It's about rebuilding trust. The chief nodded slowly, absorbing her words. I appreciate your passion and the stories shared today. I will take your suggestions to heart. But change takes time. It's not as simple as implementing new policies overnight. Frustration bubbled in the crowd. But we need action now. Someone shouted, echoing the sentiment that hung heavily in the air. Murmurs of agreement spread through the room, igniting a fierce energy. Maria sensed the tension escalating. We understand that change is not instantaneous, she said, her voice calm but firm. But we need a timeline. We need accountability. The police chief seemed to grapple with the situation, weighing his words carefully. I can promise you this. I will initiate a review of our policies and work towards establishing a community advisory board. This board will allow us to have direct communication with the community. I will also look into training programs for our officers. A spark of hope ignited in the room, but uncertainty lingered. Would these promises translate into real change? As the meeting drew to a close, Maria couldn't shake the feeling that they were standing on the precipice of something significant, but the outcome remained uncertain. After the meeting, the community was buzzing with conversation. Some felt hopeful, while others remained skeptical. What if it's just lip service? One man said, shaking his head. We've heard it all before. Jamal interjected, but we can't give up. We have to keep the pressure on. If we stay silent, nothing will change. The determination in his voice resonated, fueling the fire in others' hearts. In the following weeks, the community continued to rally. They organized follow-up meetings to discuss their next steps. The police chief's commitment to a community advisory board was a step forward, but the fight for justice wasn't over. Maria sent out emails and made phone calls, reaching out to local activists and organizations for support. We need to keep this momentum going, she told her team. Let's invite experts to speak at our next meeting and educate our community on their rights. The next meeting attracted even more attendees. As families settled in, Maria felt a swell of pride. The room was filled with passionate individuals ready to take action. They discussed strategies, planned events, and brainstormed ways to engage with the police chief. The sense of unity was powerful, binding them together in a shared mission. As the weeks rolled by, the community advisory board took shape. Members from different backgrounds came together, their collective voices amplifying the call for reform. They met regularly with the police chief, discussing policy changes, community outreach programs, and strategies for improving relations between officers and residents. Yet, not everyone was on board. Some members of the police force resisted the changes, clinging to the old ways. Rumors spread through the department, sowing seeds of doubt about the advisory board's intentions. This is just a distraction, one officer muttered in the break room. They're trying to undermine our authority. Tensions simmered beneath the surface, and Maria could sense it. The community felt emboldened, yet they had to remain vigilant. With each meeting, the stakes grew higher. Would the police chief stand firm against resistance from within his own department? Would he truly follow through on his promises? One evening, Maria received a call from the police chief. I want to meet with you and some of the advisory board members, he said, his tone serious. There's been some pushback within the department, and I want to discuss how we can address it. Maria's heart raced. This was a pivotal moment. She quickly gathered her notes and called Jamal. We have to prepare. This could change everything, she said, excitement lacing her voice. When they arrived at the police station for the meeting, 
the atmosphere felt charged. The chief explained the internal struggles he faced, revealing the tensions between officers who wanted to uphold the status quo and those who recognized the need for change. I need your support, he admitted, his voice low. I can't do this alone. Maria nodded, determination flaring within her. We're here to support you, but we need transparency. The community deserves to know what's happening. The chief agreed, and they crafted a plan to hold an open forum for residents to voice their concerns directly to the department. This could be a turning point, Maria thought, a flicker of hope igniting in her heart. As the forum approached, excitement and anxiety filled the air. Community members gathered in the town hall, their expressions a mix of determination and apprehension. Maria stood at the front, addressing the crowd. Tonight is about openness and dialogue. We are here to hold the police accountable and to ensure our voices are heard. 